I'm bringing on uh, activist and author Jay Ponte. He has worked on uh, Occupy Wall Street, Standing Rock, Bernie's two presidential campaigns, one of the co-creators of hashtag bank exit, super interesting. He's got a new book out, uh, Be the Revolution. I like that title a lot. How Occupy Wall Street and the Bernie Sanders movement reshaped American politics. Jay, welcome. How are you, brother? Brother Jank. Good to see you, good to see you. Uh, so, Jay, uh, first, let's talk generally about the book. Then I want to get to Bernie Avengers and, and all the other things. Uh, what's Be the Revolution about? Well, I wrote it. It's I wrote it basically. It's a it's a theory of change, but it's also really the history of the progressive movement, uh, which we can trace back uh, before Occupy, uh, in the aftermath of the Dennis Kucinich campaign. But really, uh, it shows it tells the story of the progressive movement from Occupy and illustrates how Bernie didn't just come out of the free market. Um, he didn't just emerge, you know, he became a viral sensation because he appealed to unrealistic millennials. Uh, but in fact, Bernie was a tactic. And a lot of people don't understand that uh, groups like Progressive Democrats of America and Occupy Wall Street activists who created a group called the People for Bernie spent a good year and a half, two years traveling around the country, following him and asking him to run, saying, run, Bernie, run. And um, this is really important because it shows that, number one, a lot of people think that Occupy failed. It's just demonstrably not true. Um, and two, people think that you know the free market gave us Bernie, where you know Bernie definitely wouldn't have run if the energy wasn't there from the, the activated Occupy network. And so it shows the, the the lineage from Occupy through two Bernie Sanders campaigns and all the way to the reemergence of the, the modern American labor movement, which is very vibrant today, all has the, the roots in, uh, in these activations. So yeah, it's that, it's our history. It's the history that the establishment doesn't want us to record. And it's also a general theory of change for the next generation of, of activists coming up who just don't have the luxury of spending 10 years or five years learning how to organize and then continually getting crushed by what I refer to as the corporate state. Um, yeah. And so we have to transmit that knowledge, both what worked and what didn't work. So Jay, uh, let me uh, press on a couple of interesting things that you just said there. What do you mean by Bernie was a tactic? So again, you know, Bernie, by all accounts, his own family, I you know, talked to family members. He didn't really want to run, and we, this is one of the things we loved about Bernie is that it wasn't in his nature to go after power. This is one of the reasons why he was such a wonderful uh, uh, spark for the for the political revolution um, is that we knew he was about the policies and about the people and about the ninety nine percent. But what happened was uh, you were I, I know you were there. There's a story of uh, you know. The Sister Giant event and Progressive Democrats of America events, and uh, what happened is, you know, Occupy activists knew that um, a Clinton administration would be a continuation of the failed warmongering and neoliberalism that had really destroyed the middle class and wreaked a lot of havoc on the planet. And we, of course, knew that there's the urgent challenges of climate change, and so. Many felt that there needed to be an answer because at that time it was just assumed that that Secretary Clinton would be the the nominee, and and that's really how it was going to go down. Um, so this was a uh, this was a campaign that was meant to ignite the grassroots. And so what happened was um, the People for Bernie, which were a number of Occupy activists, um, they actually first tried to recruit Elizabeth Warren. She declined, and so they pivoted to Bernie Sanders. And meanwhile, you had groups like Progressive Democrats of America literally follow Bernie around the country, uh, telling him to run. Uh, we the Occupy Network was activated. The night they had an, um, a, mo a mobilization called Ninety Nine Events for the Ninety Nine Percent, which became a lot of the Bernie groups um, even before Bernie even announced his campaign. So all of that, and when that happened, by all accounts, Bernie said, "Okay, there this there really is a movement that is asking me to step up, and um, there is the energy there in the grassroots uh, to um, 
you know, to do the things that he would want to do. Yeah. And, and it was, people don't also understand like what a big deal it was to go against uh, the Clinton network and the third way Democrats, the neoliberals. Okay, and uh, for those of you who don't know, by the way, uh, JMS is Sister Giant. Sister Giant run by Marianne Williamson. Uh, I, and I have spoken at a Sister Giant event, one, uh, one of the best uh, uh, receptions I, I, I ever got. So does this mean that there's a cabal of progressives? No, all it means is that, yeah, like-minded people get together and they think, yeah, we should challenge the establishment. It really sucks. Uh, and and I remember uh, two out of the three people I tried to get into the 2016 race all the way back in like 2014 uh, was Bernie, Elizabeth Warren, and and a guy who's not in Congress anymore. Uh, so they, you, Jay, you're indisputably correct about how this was bubbling, bubbling up uh, the entire time, uh, but. I did promise what uh, Bernie Avengers. So, who are the Bernie Avengers? Well, one of the one of the ways I was able to support the campaign was by wrangling what we call surrogates. So we knew that the campaign it was like a a startup that was growing too fast. Um, yet they didn't have the infrastructure to run a fifty state campaign, and um, and it was very chaotic. So. Um, my offer to um, some of the the senior national campaign staff was to create a group, which we called Bernie's Avengers, which was to recruit uh, political surrogates, so both bands and um, actors, uh, influencers, uh, Hollywood entertainment professionals who could make content and and help in all sorts of different ways. And we did that. We you know we chose to keep the group a secret because. You know, you have people, you know, like Shailene Woodley, um, Kedrick Sampson, Francis Fisher, um, who, you know, Susan Sarandon, who had huge uh, profiles. And, you know, we felt that this, there was already enough pushback coming from the establishment. So we thought that this, this, it would be strategically more valuable to keep it secret. But we created um, Bernie's Diner, which you, you, if people who are living in Los Angeles have seen, we converted the classic Johnny's Diner. Um, all sorts of things at the Democratic Platform Committee and the convention. So we did events all over the country, planned college tours. And, and we also had a sort of a network for rapid response on on social media whenever there were, uh, you know, you know, the dumpster fire of the week. We had, when, for instance, the AP would announce that Secretary Clinton won California before the votes were cast, which is weird. Or <laughs> when 160,000 people were... Uh, we're mostly progressives in Brooklyn were disenfranchised or we were facing the same disenfranchisement in California. So, you know, it was a group of people that then also after the convention and after the 2016 campaign was suspended, uh, then went on to support uh, the mobilization at Standing Rock, um, which actually Shailene was the one who who really got us all jumped in pretty much seamlessly after the convention. And uh, we immediately got, got involved in that fight. All right, other fun facts about that. Uh, so uh, an activist that went to Standing Rock and then um, wrote into TYT about it was a woman named Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Um, and uh, Shailene Woodley later uh, got engaged to Aaron Rodgers. Uh, they're not engaged anymore, just fun random facts. Uh, and uh, one of the yes, Avengers- that technically that happened. Yeah, that happened. Uh, hey, the heart wants what it wants. Yeah, of course, uh, it's and, a free country, yeah. it's a beautiful country. Uh, and uh, one of the Avengers was an actual Avenger, Mark Ruffalo. Uh, I don't know if he was technically in the Avengers, but he's been part of the progressive movement for a long time. And actually, by the way, recommends Jay's book. So another good reason to check it out. Uh, okay, now, to uh, but I wanna make a point to the audience. So a lot of people saw Bernie's Diner in LA because it's prominence in Wilshire. And I remember seeing it thinking, huh, I wonder where that came from. Because I wasn't part of that effort at all. Uh, but when you see something like that, and that goes all the way up to Bernie, um, understand that somebody worked on that. It didn't come out of nowhere. It was a guy like Jay who put that together, and a lot more people, not just Jay, not just the, the activists that you see on TYT, but but an army that makes that happen in a lot of ways. And Jay, uh, I, I interviewed Bernie a long time ago about and asked him, when did you first know that you actually had a shot in 2016? And he told a story, I think it was it was in Minnesota, that he went to some event that he was gonna do. He saw this giant line around the corner, thousands of people. 
and he uh, and he asked his advisor, I forget if it was Jeff Weaver or whoever it was, oh, who, who's on before us? Why are they here? And they're like, no, Bernie, they're here for you. Uh, and so some of that, that groundswell that you see is both organic, because if, if there wasn't a popular movement, then it wouldn't work, right? But also put together by guys like Jay to the point that where it even surprises Bernie Sanders himself. So it's amazing work. But um, but Jay, now let me come back to another uh, comment you made. You said Occupy Wall Street did work. Okay, so tell us what you mean by that. Well, you can see that it literally changed the landscape in America. Before Occupy Wall Street, any discussion of income inequality would usually be met by some kind of pejorative, you know, dis, uh, dismissal that it was, you know, dismissed as class war. And at the time, the idea of class war wasn't cool. Uh, you know, hadn't yet hit sort of a critical mass. Um, and it would it would generally get, you know, dismissed as communist or you know class war, um, which we do agree there is a class war. It exists. Yeah, um, except the rich started uh, it. And but the point is, is that the 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 Occupy Wall Street did a few really important things. One, it got people out of the house. You know, people who were disillusioned, disenfranchised, uh, uh, who had lost everything in the 2008 crisis and saw no justice. Even those people who were in charge, you know, they were given cabinet positions, so there was no justice. It got people out of the house. It was a place of ideas and uh, very serious activists getting together. Um, it was routinely uh, disparaged as you know, sort of ne'er do well hippies. Uh, when it's actually not true, uh, there were quite there was a lot of vibrant debate. But one of the functions of late stage capitalism is something we call atomization, which means. The structures that have kept our society together have broken down, and people end up being uh, individuals that feel, you know, s sad, alone, powerless. And this is one of the reasons why um, Amazon is the most profitable company in the world. You know, um, but what added, what Occupy did is got people outside, out of the house, and it also probably was the first time in the post 9/11 era. That the you know even post you know the anti-war movement of the 60s and 70s and the the liberation movements, the first time that the establishment was really shook, you know people were there was worried there was a, it, it turned into a global movement. There were actions all over the world in solidarity, um, in hundreds of countries, and um, it was really a thing to behold. It was also the advent of citizen journalism in a lot of ways um, in America. We had seen this in in you know the the Arab Spring, but uh, but really it was the first time uh, we see uh, the internet being used very strategically um, with people live streaming. So you you know things that would never have gotten covered, like a lot of the police, the brutal police violence. Um, you know people were able to see that in real time, and that really led to you know the the movement growing like wildfire. And to me. If you had asked, you know, I remember I was part of Occupy Los Angeles. You know, think about a few months before that, if someone had said, hey, I got this idea, let's get a thousand people and camp outside of City Hall, you'd say, you're outside of your mind. This will never happen. And yet it did. And it was really, for those of us who were there, was, it was such an awakening. It was such an awakening moment. And the, the people, many of the people, you know, the, the movement did dissipate. After we were very brutally crushed um, by coordinated efforts, you, you saw the you know national um, associations of mayors, sheriffs um, working with private industries, working with the banks to strategically dismantle the the occupations. Um, but you saw the activists that came out of that go on to do incredible things, working with unions and labor, fighting and, and the time fighting for fifteen. Uh, dollar minimum wage, fighting for public banking, fighting for Medicare for all. Like there are countless, you can see how uh, this kept going. You could even see how the DNA um, also, you know, helped, um, you know, maybe that, that DNA also might have contributed to, um, you know, later uprisings like 
uh, like what happened in Ferguson. You know, some of the same tactics mm -hmm. were used. I, I'm not saying that Occupy was was resulted in Black Lives Matter, not not at all. But you can see how there there may have been some some influence there and may have helped uh, pave the way. Yep, makes sense. So finally, um, if people want to be the revolution, Jay, what would you recommend that they do? Well, uh, the book itself does have a number of uh, really practical things that they can do. Um, it's meant to be a general theory of change, a modern theory of change. A lot of our organizing uh, theories and tactics are kind of stuck in the 60s and 70s. Meanwhile, you know, the book also shows how the fascists, there's an entire chapter that breaks down how QAnon was organized, um, which is way scarier than people think. Um, but there's, you know, there's a chapter on, you know, like kind of like, where do I, where do I start? So whether you're a veteran activist, you've been in it for, for a long time, or you're brand new, or maybe you just want to learn more. Um, it's the, the, I think that it's, it was written to give people the confidence that, that a, a single person or a small group of individuals can make a profound difference. Uh, and we would live in a very, very different world um, if not for these efforts. You know, we talk tells the story of Justice Democrats, which you were part of the the you helped to to found that. Um, you know, the Justice Democrats. So time and time again, a small group of citizens is able to literally change the world. And we would be in a very different world if not for these efforts. Even this administration, which I have a lot of, uh, it's been disappointing on many levels. But at the same time, you would never have Joe Biden showing up at labor rallies. You know, you would never have, you know, the, the IRA. You know, so there have been tremendous gains made by these movements, and we'd be living in a very, very different world if not. But people can can go to be the revolution.us and um you know, there's a there's a free bonus chapter available as well. If you sign up for that, then we can let you know about um, some of the efforts we're doing to bring uh, trainings to activists across the country. Yep, and the link for the to buy the book will be in the description box, so you can just click there too to get the book. And uh, and I'll just double down on what Jay said. That's right. Just Democrats originally it was just four guys who got together, had an idea, and then next thing you know. Uh, We've got a wing of the Democratic Party that we established. And so, of course, it's not next thing you know, it's after tons of really hard work. But it things are way more possible than the people in power want you to believe. They, want, they don't want you to try. So defy power by the very simple act of trying. Uh, check out Be the Revolution, great book. Jay, thanks for joining us, really appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Jenk. No problem. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, I really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.